You can see from Sky Witness 9 HD, this was the scene at the retreat at Twin Lakes townhomes in Sanford Sunday night. Residents heard loud yelling and called 911 for the Sanford police. Moments later, more 911 calls about a gunshot being fired. Kelly Nevin's son lives here and heard the shot. I was sitting on the couch about to watch the Oscars, you know, <laughs> and uh, boom. And you know, they have a baby, so it's like, you know, he just told her, stay in there, I'll just look. And he looked and he saw the body. Police got here within a minute and found 17-year-old Trayvon Martin shot dead. Paramedics could not bring him back. And they found 26-year-old George Zimmerman, who they say admitted right away he had shot the teenager. An eyewitness says Zimmerman appeared to be in shock. At that point, Mr. Zimmerman was taken into custody, investigative detention, if you will, uh, to go to the station to conduct interviews with him to find out exactly what happened. Police won't say exactly what happened yet, but say Zimmerman was acting in his role as a neighborhood watch member. They say typically when a known shooter is not arrested, there's reason to believe the shooting could have been justifiable. But they say the teenager who was here visiting relatives did not have a gun. A police volunteer was handing out flyers today. Police are meeting with concerned residents tomorrow evening at the clubhouse. Since he was a boy, 17-year-old Trayvon Martin wanted to play football and become a pilot. The high school junior was visiting family in this predominantly white, gated town home community 10 days ago. Around sunset, he was walking from a nearby convenience store with a bag of Skittles and an iced tea. Neighborhood watch leader George Zimmerman called police to report a suspicious black man. Before police arrived, Zimmerman confronted the teenager, and during a scuffle, Zimmerman shot him in the chest, killing him. We just don't understand... Uh why why the Sanford Police Department is really sitting on their hands on this. Sanford Police questioned Zimmerman who has a concealed weapons permit but he was never arrested. Yeah. Chief Bill Lee said the investigation yeah. is ongoing but Zimmerman has been cooperative and claims it was self-defense even though Martin didn't have a weapon. Does the confrontation alone give him a reason a justifiable reason to shoot and kill a 17 year old boy? Well, it, it, it de depends on the facts and circumstances. Trayvon Martin, a 17-year-old kid, had Skittles. It, no way you can say self-defense. The family's attorney wants to hear the 911 call Zimmerman made, but Sanford police won't release it. The chief confirmed dispatchers did tell Zimmerman to stay away from the teenager because police were on the way. If your son had been white, do you think he would have been shot and killed that day? No, I don't think so. Eyewitness News uncovered this picture George Zimmerman took at the Orange County Jail in 2005 when he was arrested for battery on a law enforcement officer and resisting arrest with violence. We showed these court documents to Trayvon Martin's family and his mother couldn't hold back tears. As a mother, my heart is broken. My heart hurts. I don't understand. The case was dismissed, but Martin's mother said it should have been considered 11 days ago when Zimmerman shot and killed her 17-year-old son. Zimmerman had called police to report a suspicious black man in his neighborhood. And even though dispatchers told him not to confront the teenager, he did. They got into a scuffle and Zimmerman, who was the neighborhood watch leader, shot the teenager in the chest but was never arrested. You had a person with a propensity towards violence, or at least the appearance. Sanford police knew about the arrest, but said again today, 28-year-old Zimmerman has been cooperative. Zimmerman is a student at Seminole State College, where he is scheduled to start a criminal justice class Monday. He has been arrested before. That's not something you would consider when determining whether or not to arrest Can him I for shooting and killing someone? I just answered that question, that we take everything into consideration. It's a full and complete investigation that is fair and will be presented to the state attorney's office. The cry stopped as soon as the gun went off, so I know it was the little boy. Mary Kutcher said that cry for help got her attention the day 17-year-old Trayvon Martin was shot and killed in her backyard by George Zimmerman, a neighborhood vigilante. Until now, she's ignored repeated attempts by national and local media to share what she saw partially out of fear. So we said everything okay, and he just looked at us, and some asked him again, um, What's up? What's going on? Everything okay? And he just said, call, call the police. Kind of nonchalantly, like, leave me alone. According to this partial police report, Kutcher is one of six eyewitnesses Sanford police took a statement from that night. Kutcher said it was short and police never questioned her in detail until after she repeatedly reached out to them. Blew us off. 
And I called him back again and I said, I know this was not self-defense. There was no punching, no hitting going on at the time, no wrestling. Kutcher believes whatever confrontation there was, it ended before they got to her backyard. And she believes Zimmerman continued to chase Martin as he tried to get home. Police said Zimmerman had a bloody nose and blood on the back of his head. And he told police he was yelling for someone to help, but no one would. Kutcher believes even if Martin got the best of Zimmerman, it's no excuse to kill an unarmed teenager half his size. I assumed he's going to be arrested. Common sense will tell you. And he wasn't. Chief Bill Lee has said more than once his investigators found no probable cause to arrest George Zimmerman February 26th or in the days after Zimmerman shot and killed 17-year-old Trayvon Martin. Zimmerman said he shot in self-defense, but Martin was not armed. For thousands protesting and demanding Chief Bill Lee be fired, that alone should have been enough for an arrest. As the city manager, you also have the right and the authority to fire Chief Bill Lee. Why don't you do it now? Because before I would make that decision to prejudge or to fire based upon the outcry, I'd like to have some information that I see is comfortable, that I would feel comfortable in terminating the employment. Of but Sanford Police, led by Chief Lee, who earns $102,000 a year, never tested Zimmerman for drugs, nor did a background check on him. They did both on Trayvon Martin. Now the investigation is in the hands of State Attorney Norm Wolfinger. Mayor Triplett wouldn't go into details about the investigation, but said he's even baffled about some of what he's heard and seen. That's my 3 a.m. wake-up call is, is, you know, how could this be? Detectives seem to take Zimmerman's word that he shot in self-defense, but eyewitnesses who police interviewed said they heard a child screaming for help, not Zimmerman, and they saw Zimmerman standing over Martin after he shot him. Plus, no one can tell us why Zimmerman wasn't tested for drugs or alcohol, which is standard procedure in a shooting investigation. What else do you need? I'm hearing rumors and speculations, and that's why with the U.S. Department of Justice, I'd like to have them review what took place. This is Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 11. Coverage you can count on. We want to see Zimmerman in court with handcuffs behind his back. As thousands of passionate protesters led by Al Sharpton gathered in Sanford to demand justice for Trayvon. I pledge I will not let my son die in vain. <laughs> Bombshell new developments in the investigation of the 17-year-old's death. Tonight, Governor Rick Scott appointed a new special prosecutor to the case. It is just one of the breaking developments in this case that we're following right now. We're getting new information about the woman Governor Scott appointed to take over. And within the past 90 minutes, the largest rally since Trayvon was shot and killed last month just wrapped up. Skywitness 9 HD flew over the crowd of at least 10,000 people who gathered for the rally at Fort Mellon Park in Sanford to demand justice for Trayvon Martin. From the air, you can see just how crowded it was. And that crowd is evidence of how Trayvon's death has touched so many people. From the sky and on the ground, We've had a team of reporters working all night to bring you every new development in this major local story. And we begin with Channel 9's Darlene Jones, who is live at Fort Mellon Park. And Darlene, the crowd had a strong response to Trayvon Martin's family and Reverend Al Sharpton. There was emotion and there was anger here tonight. I've been here since about 2 o'clock this afternoon and a crowd that started with a few dozen quickly grew to at least 10,000. No justice! Reverend Al Sharpton lit a fire under the crowd at Fort Mellon Park. But we cannot allow a legal precedent to be established in this city that tells us it is legal for a man to kill us. George Zimmerman still hasn't been arrested for shooting and killing Trayvon Martin, all because he told Sanford police he shot the 17-year-old in the chest in self-defense. But 911 calls revealed Zimmerman followed Martin, all because he looked suspicious in his hoodie as he rushed home in the rain. Martin's mother was overwhelmed by the support and stared at the crowd before she uttered a verse from the Bible. Trust the Lord yeah. with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. I stand before you today not knowing how I'm walking right now. 
because my heart hurts for my son. And you could hear the anger in his father's voice. I pledge I will not let my son die in vain. The parents' emotional words seem to further frustrate parents in the crowd who feel like Trayvon Martin could have been their child. But Reverend Sharpton warned them not to let their anger turn into violence. Don't let them make you act in a way that they can say, see, that's what they were afraid of with Trayvon. Reverend Sharpton also encouraged the crowd to come back to Sanford on Monday when he and others will lead a march to City Hall to continue demanding justice for Trayvon Martin. And they don't want the police chief to take a temporary leave of absence. They want him fired. Reporting live in Seminole County in Sanford, Darlene Jones, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. And as all that was playing out in Sanford tonight, Governor Rick Scott announced a new state attorney would be taking over the investigation into Trayvon Martin's death. And we learned Orlando State Senator Gary Siplin helped choose Angela Corey from Jacksonville. I got so many phone calls about justice. They felt that the current prosecutor who has a relationship with the Sanford Police Department would not be fair. There may be an appearance of conflict, and I think there was. Corey is the state attorney from the 4th Judicial District uh, Circuit, rather, in Duval County. She's stepping in since the governor and the attorney general encouraged current state attorney Norm Wolfinger to remove himself from the case. Tonight, Corey wouldn't say much about the case, but did say she's ready to get started. We're honored to serve the governor, and uh, we um, are going to get right on it. We also asked our legal assistant and analyst Bill Schaefer about Corey, and he said she's the perfect pick. She's a no-nonsense, tough prosecutor. The governor couldn't have asked any other prosecutor better than her to oversee this investigation and present this case to a grand jury. Schaefer told us as soon as Corey took office in January of 2009, she cleaned house and fired the, quote, dead wood. Schaefer said she also increased the prosecution of juveniles in adult court, and he said her involvement should calm the fears of a lot of people who want justice for Trayvon. The best thing that could have happened for this case happened. The chief of police stepped aside. The prosecutor stepped aside. Now everyone can take a deep breath and let the process unfold. Tonight, Governor Scott issued this statement calling for, quote, a task force on citizen safety and protection to investigate how to make sure a tragedy such as this does not occur in the future. The governor said he also wants the task force to thoroughly review Florida's stand your ground law. Right after tonight's rally ended, we asked Sanford City Manager about why Police Chief Bill Lee was allowed to temporarily resign. Just before 5 o'clock this afternoon, the chief said his involvement with the Trayvon Martin investigation was becoming a distraction. Channel 9's Jeff Deal continues our live team coverage at Sanford City Hall. And Jeff, how did the city manager defend the decision to not fire Chief Lee? Well, he basically said that so far he has not seen any evidence showing that the chief has actually done anything wrong. And he wants a full investigation to wrap up in this case before he decides whether or not to fire the chief. As people poured out of the rally on the streets of Sanford. I think that, you know, should have been uh, taking place a while ago. They reacted to today's major development, the announcement by Sanford Police Chief Bill Lee late this afternoon that he's stepping down temporarily. That I must temporarily remove myself from the position as police chief for the city of Sanford. I do this in the hopes of restoring some semblance of calm. It was the inaction of the police department that led to this massive national outrage. Late last month, officers did not arrest George Zimmerman after he shot and killed the unarmed teenager Trayvon Martin. Zimmerman has claimed self-defense. Today, the chief stood by his department's investigation, but city commissioners yesterday gave him a vote of no confidence, and NAACP leaders have called for his firing. But tonight, the city manager defended his decision not to fire the the chief. What is it that you're concerned about if you fire him right do? now? What did he do? I want an independent law enforcement agency to review the actions. For now, Chief Lee will have no part in the department, at least until the state attorney's investigation is complete. If he isn't fired, he could conceivably be back on the job, a notion that doesn't sit well with people here tonight. What's the temporary thing? What is that about? You know you didn't do your job when you was there, so why is it temporary? Are you trying to save a spot for yourself? 
And the city manager would not elaborate on what temporary will mean for the police chief, but we do know that the city plans to do a search for an interim police chief, so it sounds like Lee will be on. Uh, off the job for quite a while. In the meantime, two captains will take over the police department and run it. Reporting live in Sanford, Seminole County, Jeff Deal, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Our team coverage continues on the death of Trayvon Martin. Eyewitness News spoke exclusively with the family of the teenager who was with Trayvon just before he was shot and killed. And he asked uh, Chad, you know, what did you want back? And Chad told him, hey, I'll take a pack of Skittles. The missteps they say Sanford police made just hours after Trayvon's death. As the public outcry over Trayvon Martin's killing reached a fever pitch tonight, Ivan Sues is uncovering even more questions about the police department's case. Investigative reporter George Spencer found out detectives never interviewed the friend Trayvon was with just before the shooting. George talked to that boy's family in this exclusive interview. 17-year-old Trayvon Martin's baby face has been seen around the world, but this little football player, Chad Joseph, now 14 years old, has apparently not been seen or even spoken to by Sanford PD, even though he was the last person hanging out with Trayvon the night he was shot and killed. The police department has yet not spoken to my grandson, which was the last one to have visibly contact, eye contact, conversation with Trayvon Martin. Trayvon's father dates Chad's mother and the two teenagers became friends. On the deadly night, they were at Chad's mother's home at the retreat at Twin Lakes, texting schoolmates and watching the NBA All-Star game. It was Chad's halftime request for candy that sent Trayvon on his fateful 7-Eleven run. And he asked uh, Chad, you know, what did you want back? And Chad told him, hey, I'll take a pack of Skittles. The Skittles he had on him. The Skittles he had on him. Chad's mother has not wanted her son to speak publicly, but he would talk to police about Trayvon and his state of mind. But the family says Chad's never been interviewed. The Sanford Police Department has yet failed us again. In fact, Chad didn't know his friend was killed until after school the next day. Oh, no one came and talked to him. Chad didn't know Trayvon was deceased till he got out of school the next day. He went on with normal life. Yeah, like nothing happened. He didn't know. George Spencer, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. The Sanford Police Department did not reply to our questions about whether they interviewed Chad Joseph. Stay with Eyewitness News for continuing coverage of the Trayvon Martin case. We'll be sure to bring you every new development as it happens. For instant updates, just head to our website, wftv.com slash Trayvon Martin. This is Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 11. Coverage you can count on. Breaking right now, this is George Zimmerman's new mugshot, just snapped after he was taken into the Seminole County Jail with his head covered, charged with second-degree murder for the death of Trayvon Martin. And tonight, Trayvon's parents say their son is finally getting justice. We wanted nothing more, nothing less. We just wanted an arrest. The Sanford community <laughs> is celebrating. <laughs> And Zimmerman's new attorney says he'll fight the charges, no matter what challenges Zimmerman faces. He's concerned about getting a fair trial. We've been following major breaking developments all night in the death of Trayvon Martin. And here's the latest. Just after 6 o'clock tonight, the lead prosecutor in the case announced Zimmerman was being charged with second-degree murder. About an hour and a half ago, Zimmerman was booked into the Seminole County Jail, where he will spend the night. And then tomorrow at 1.30, he'll go before a judge where his attorney will try and bond him out of jail. Only Skywood is 9HD found and followed the FDLE vehicles transporting Zimmerman as the two SUVs made their way down I-4 to the the 417 and right up to the Seminole County Jail. And tonight we have teams of reporters set up across Central Florida and in Jacksonville to bring you the most accurate coverage of this major breaking story. We start with Channel 9's Kathy Belich, who is live at the Seminole County Jail. And Kathy Zimmerman is meeting with his attorney right now. What's going on? That's right. Just a few minutes ago, we saw George Zimmerman's new attorney, Mark O'Mara, come here to the jail for his first face-to-face -face visit with Zimmerman. He told us he promised Zimmerman on the phone tonight. He'd meet with him tonight. He's here. He says he believes Zimmerman is scared, and he will be preparing Zimmerman for what to expect tomorrow at that first court appearance. Now, Zimmerman is being held on no bond here. He turned himself in to FDLE headquarters in Jacksonville tonight. He was brought in right through those doors there at 8.23 p.m., and the sheriff says he is getting no special treatment.
George Zimmerman, now officially an accused murderer, was brought in by an FDLE caravan of unmarked cars with dark tinted windows. Agents whisked him into the Seminole County Jail tonight quickly out of concern for his safety. But no one was here except for law enforcement and the media. These photos show him wearing a plaid shirt and how he covered his head with a dark jacket. He had turned himself in hours earlier to FDLE in Jacksonville after finding out there was a second degree murder warrant out for his arrest. FDLE says he was alone when he turned himself in. His mugshot popped up on the Seminole County Jail website minutes later. He appears to be expressionless. Seminole County Sheriff Don Esslinger told us Zimmerman will be a evaluated for physical and mental health issues and if he needs to be in special custody he will be. We have a policy that will protect uh, certain inmates as a result of a threat against their lives and that will all be uh, taken into consideration. I will not I will not release where he will be placed in our facility. The sheriff says he's ready to handle any security issues that could come up. Earlier today an extra security camera was installed on the roof of the jail outside the sally port. Security was beefed up in the hour before Zimmerman got here, more officers, including a Department of Justice officer. The sheriff says he's not received any death threats against Zimmerman tonight. And Zimmerman should find out tomorrow afternoon whether he'll be able to bond out of here and if so, under what conditions. There was a lot of concern for Zimmerman's safety here tonight, but there was absolutely no threat posed against him. Reporting live at the Seminole County Jail, Kathy Bellich, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Kathy. Special Prosecutor Angela Corey said second degree murder was the most serious charge she could file against George Zimmerman. Trayvon Martin's parents were in Washington, D.C. today as they watched her announce the charges on TV. And now they say they can start the healing process. Channel 9's Darlene Jones joins us live from Jacksonville. Darlene. Bob, this is the warrant State Attorney Angela Corey issued for George Zimmerman's arrest. She broke the news to Trayvon Martin's family first, the family she met just three weeks ago, and prayed with them before she promised a thorough and fair investigation. Today, we filed an information charging Z George Zimmerman with murder in the second degree. After 45 days of freedom, George Zimmerman has been arrested for killing 17-year-old Trayvon Martin. Martin's parents watched from Washington, D.C. as state attorney Angela Cordy told the world what they've wanted to hear ever since Zimmerman admitted to killing their son, who had a charming smile and dreams of becoming a pilot. We simply wanted an arrest. We wanted nothing more, nothing less. We just wanted an arrest, and we got it. And I say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Zimmerman spotted Martin in his gated Sanford community and thought he looked suspicious. He followed him even after he called for police and after dispatchers told him he didn't need to. But Zimmerman said Martin, who was not armed, confronted him, punched him in the nose, and bashed his head into the ground. As police took him in for questioning, surveillance cameras didn't seem to capture any significant injuries. Was there one single piece of evidence that led you to charge him with murder in the second we degree? We don't discuss the evidence in a case, it would be improper to do so. Corey confirmed investigators did re-interview eyewitnesses but still haven't talked to Zimmerman. She took over last month after Sanford Police and the Seminole County State Attorney's Office faced criticism. Corey wouldn't comment about that, but Congresswoman Corinne Brown didn't hold her tongue. I can't tell you one thing, I felt that they did correctly. Trayvon Martin's family uh, spoke, as you heard, in Washington, D.C., and his father also said, this is just the beginning. We have a long way to go, and we have faith. Reporting live in Jacksonville tonight, Darlene Jones, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Now, tonight, Zimmerman has a new attorney, and as you just saw, he arrived to meet with Zimmerman at the jail. We were there about 7 o'clock tonight when Mark O'Mara spoke for the first time about the charges his client is now facing. Channel 9's Renee Stoll joins us live outside O'Mara's office in downtown Orlando. And Renee, it sounds as if tonight was the first time O'Mara met Zimmerman face to face. That is correct, Bob. Previous to this, they've only spoken over the phone about what will happen tomorrow afternoon, which could include George Zimmerman going home released on bond. Tomorrow we're going to have a bond motion hearing, hopefully before a circuit judge in Seminole County. I'll be certainly seeking his release. George Zimmerman's third and most recent attorney, Mark O'Mara, said it's not uncommon for bonds to be given in second-degree murder cases, but they're often set very high. 
My hope is that the judge will grant a bond, and that'll be a bond that the family can make. They are not a, a family of means, so that's going to be difficult to begin with. O'Mara was retained after Zimmerman's two previous attorneys said yesterday they lost all contact with him. O'Mara said Zimmerman sounded rational during his phone conversation with him. He understood what I was saying, understood what he was saying. Um, we're communicating well. However, O'Mara told us Zimmerman is very troubled with the state's decision to charge him with second-degree murder. O'Mara said he hasn't seen a single piece of evidence yet and wouldn't say if he's ever specifically worked a stand-your-ground case before. The stand-your-ground statute, I think, was 2005. The idea of having self-defense cases, yes, I've done several. Zimmerman's biggest concern at this point, a fair trial, something his attorney thinks could be challenging with a national focus on this case. There's obviously been a a lot of, of information flowing. Uh, I think a lot of it's been both premature and maybe inappropriate. Now, O'Mara said that he will be meeting with the state attorney's office tomorrow to get crucial documents in this case, and he'll also be at that bond hearing. Now, if Zimmerman does get bond and he is released, O'Mara believes that the judge will not force him to stay in this area for his own safety. Reporting live in Orlando, Renee Stoll, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Tonight, community members gathered at a Sanford church for a service called Celebrating Justice for Trayvon Martin. The Allen Chapel AME Church has been the site of several rallies since Trayvon was shot and killed. Channel 9's Kenneth Craig is live outside the church right now, and Kenneth, that service wrapped up within the last couple of hours. Marty, in reaction here has pretty much been the same all around. Relief that George Zimmerman is finally behind bars tonight. It's the place parishioners have called ground zero in the battle to get justice for 17-year-old Trayvon Martin. For six weeks, we've watched as Allen Chapel AME church members have packed the Sanford Chapel time and again, calling for George Zimmerman's arrest. Tonight, they came together once again, thankful it finally happened. It was long overdue, and uh, I, was, I was glad that they finally decided to do something. Be the there was singing and even dancing. The service in honor of Trayvon had been set up well before the church knew of today's announcement that charges had been filed and Zimmerman was in custody. Church leaders said they feared Zimmerman wouldn't be charged or arrested. Instead, they called today's announcement victorious. The wheel of motion uh, beginning to turn. Even with an arrest, people who came together tonight vowed their fight for justice is still not over. They say they plan to see this case through till the very end. This is a beginning. You know, uh, I think it still has a, a long way to go. About 10 people spoke here tonight. This service lasted about two hours. And that's the latest live in Sanford. Kenneth Craig, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Tonight, Sanford City leaders are breathing a sigh of relief now that some action has finally been taken in the death of Trayvon Martin. Channel 9's Ryan Hughes was there when the mayor and the city manager spoke outside City Hall. Ryan, are they expecting any trouble tonight? Bob, they're not bracing for any problems related to this case. This city has certainly been on edge for quite some time, but tonight that concern has gone down. It's been a little more than a month since the outrage over the shooting death of Trayvon Martin began to swirl. Late today came the first sense of relief. We'll be seeking healing for the city of Sanford and ask for the community's cooperation as we move forward. A move that many see possible now that a special prosecutor announced that George Zimmerman is charged with second-degree murder and he's been booked into the Seminole County Jail. It's a positive step for a city that's been on edge since early March. We have a justice system in this country. It takes time, and I understand the frustration that people have had. It city leaders addressed the media this evening after the prosecutor's remarks and asked for civility. We call for continued calm in the city of Sanford its surrounding communities and across the nation. But all along, city leaders stood by the police department's decision not to arrest or charge Zimmerman, even when the public vehemently disagreed. Can people in this city have faith in the city's police department? Yes, Watch. yes they can. A police department that remains under investigation and under a very watchful public eye. And Police Chief Bill Lee is still off the job tonight with pay. When asked if he would ultimately be fired, the city manager had no comment. Live at City Hall in Sanford, Seminole County, Ryan Hughes, Channel 9 Eyewitness News.